Hello everyone, welcome to Scholar Hat. My name is Shalene Chohan. I am Microsoft MVP, Technical Concern Corporate Trainer. In this video, I will tell you about how you can become the .NET Microservices developer. So when it is coming to the microservices, so microservices are widely used to build the scalable enterprise gate application. So to learn the microservices with the .NET, I am going to tell you about the 12 skills. So skill number one is know the .NET fundamentals. So make sure you are aware of the c -sharp, .NET framework, .NET Core and its ecosystem. So .NET Core is now not limited to the Windows based platform. You can run .NET Core everywhere. So whether it's in Mac, Linux, Ubuntu and the Windows everywhere, we can run the .NET Core based application nowadays. So you should know that ecosystem. The second thing is you must know the ASP.NET Core and Web API. So when it is coming to building the microservices, so behind the scene, we are building the APIs. So you must know how to build the modern REST APIs using the ASP.NET Core Web API because the ASP.NET Core is known for its performance as compared to the older ASP.NET Web form and older ASP.NET Web API. So there is a huge difference in the performance of .NET Core and the .NET framework. So you should know the latest stack in the .NET for building the things. And along with the ASP.NET Core, make sure you are aware of how to use dependency injection, how to use the middleware, how to use the filters, how to create the REST APIs and what are the, the best practices we have in the ASP.NET Core. Everything you should know because these things will help you to build your enterprise gate application. The next thing you should know the understanding about the microservices architecture and microservices design patterns. It does not mean the microservices you have to apply everywhere because microservices architecture is not for every project. So you should have a proper understanding where we should use microservices, where we should not use microservices. Even you should have that understanding of taking the decision which design pattern I should use, which design pattern I should not use because in microservices we have the various design patterns. So make sure you have practiced all the design patterns about the microservices. The next thing is containerization. When it is coming to building the various microservices, if you're taking the example of let's say Twitter, Facebook and Netflix, they are using more than 500 plus microservices. So how these 500 plus or 100 plus microservices, we can host them and manage them in a better way. So nowadays, containerization is a technology the people are using for hosting their microservices based application. So make sure you know the Docker, you should know that the Kubernetes so that we can deploy the hundred of microservices with the help of the Kubernetes cluster and we can create the packaging of our each microservice using the Docker. So you should know how to use Docker for creating the Docker image and how to use the Kubernetes for running that container. The next thing we have in the API gateway. So we have built, let's say hundred of microservices. Now it is coming to integrate them so that we can introduce the routing. We can introduce the authentication, authorization, cache and many more things from the one place. So their API gateway will help us. So API gateway is helping us to implement the routing for the backend microservices, to implement the authentication, authorization, and many more things. So you should explore how to use Ocelot API gateway, how to use the Azure API management, which we can use with the .NET based application. The next time we have been the service discovery. So when it is coming to calling the backend microservices, so these backend microservices might be down. So how we will figure out the services up or down so we having the service discovery design patterns over there. So try to learn how we can use the service discovery using the various framework like we have in Eureka, we have in the console, we have in the many others service discovery framework. The next skill set we have in the messaging and the event driven architecture. So when it is coming to the communicating with the microservices. So microservices mainly communicate in the asynchronous way. So when it is coming to implementing the asynchronous communication, we communicate with the help of messages. So there you need to know how to use the various service bus, like we have in the Azure service bus, we have in the RabbitMQ, we have in the Kafka and many more message broker. So these message broker we use 
to initiate the communication among the microservices into a project even we can implement the event driven architecture as well so that the microservices can communicate to each other they can share the data among each other that will required as a part of implementing the workflow the next thing you need to know here the monitoring and logging so think about a scenario you have in the 100 plus microservices and you have to implement a workflow in the workflow let's say we are using the five microservices and if there is any error while executing that workflow so it is very difficult to trace it is very difficult to diagnose the issue so to diagnose that is make sure you are doing the proper logging at each service level you are monitoring all the things so that you able to troubleshoot the challenge you able to troubleshoot the things so monitoring and logging the activity is a important part to implement a workflow in the microservices so for implementing the monitoring and logging you can use the grafana you can use the open telemetry you can use the alk stack so these are the framework and the stack we can use for monitoring and logging purpose the next thing we have in the security in microservices of course what are the system we are building in the system we have in the various microservices but it does not mean i'm going to write the security code at each microservices level so we having the api gateway approach we having the many more approach where we can write the code at one place to authenticate all the microservices so understand the token based security understand the oauth based authentication and authorization so that you can integrate the things into your project and make sure you know all the best practices about it the next one we having the continuous integration and deployment that is ci cd so when it is coming to automate the build and the releases of each microservice so we have to integrate the devops practices without the devops practices it is very difficult to maintain 100 plus microservices or even more than that also so we have to anyhow implement the ci cd pipeline for the build and for the release so that we can quickly provide the releases of our microservices independently and we can automate it the next one we have in the cloud platforms so when it is coming to hosting the microservices based project so we are going to the cloud platform nowadays so as a .net developer i suggest to go ahead with microsoft azure even you can learn the aws and google cloud as well explore the microsoft azure how it can help us to host our various microservices how the azure kubernetes service can help us to create a kubernetes cluster and hosting our various microservices over there even we having the azure api management we having the service bus we having the various azure services which people use for building the microservices based application and the next important thing is real world projects until you will not implement the various microservices patterns into a real application you will not have the confidence so try to build the clone of the real world application like e-commerce application being the ed tech application ott platform and also implement all the best practices which actually they use so that you will have a complete understanding how we have to use all the microservices various patterns into the real project so if you are looking for to become a successful dotnet microservices developer join the scholar hat microservices training program on dotnet where i will teach you how to become a microservices developer how to implement all the microservices patterns into your project and how to finally deploy the things on cloud so thank you for watching this video if you like this video please do let me know in the comment section below and let us know what the tools and the technology you use to build the microservices with the dotnet thank you for watching this video